Graham construction worker sits down two meters from the end of a beam uh, to eat his lunch. The beam has a mass, I did not write that up there, the beam has a mass of 1450 kilograms. All right. The cable supporting the beam is rated at 15,000 newtons, meaning if the tension in that cable exceeds 15,000 newtons, it'll break. Should the worker be worried while he sits there? All right, so what are we interested in solving in this problem? Well, we need to know what is the tension in that cable. So our object of interest is what that cable is connected to. So our object that's going to allow us to examine that tension is the beam. And we want to determine the tension that that cable is, is uh, exerting and that is being exerted on the beam. So what kind of situation do we have? Well, we're in a situation of static equilibrium. The beam is not rotating. It's not moving laterally. So it's not translating and it's not rotating. So this is a state of static equilibrium. Now we have two approaches to static equilibrium. We have a torque approach and we have a forces approach. So we just have to pick one to start with to see if we can figure out the tension in that beam. So let's do a torque approach. So if I want to look at the torques exerted about that beam, I'm going to draw my extended free body diagram of the beam. So there it is. And I like to draw it in the orientation of the object itself. We're then going to look at the forces, draw the forces on the beam, and we're going to draw them at the location that they're acting. That's the beauty about different torques. Now we can talk about, we'll talk about the interactions. You can do the force tree if you'd like. What are the forces acting on the beam? Well, we know there's the force of gravity acting on the beam between the earth and the beam. Gravity acts at the object's center of mass. It's a uniform beam, so the center of mass is in the, in the geometric center. So we have our force of gravity, which we know to be mass times gravity. Good. All right, what's another force acting on the beam? Well, the guy's sitting on it. He's pushing down on the beam. There's a force between the beam and the guy. He's sitting four meters from this end of the beam, so we will draw his force. So here's the force of the worker on the beam, four meters from the end. And we have the tension in the cable. Good. So that's kind of pulling the beam back and up. So here is the tension in the cable. And then the beam is interacting with the wall. Now we don't exactly know what direction of the force, but if we think about forces being independent and having vertical and horizontal components, we could say, we could break that force up and say, well, there's a force of the wall vertically, and there's a force of the wall horizontally. Vertically, if I suddenly remove the wall, the beam would fall down. So that must tell me that the force of the wall vertically is pointing up. And if I suddenly remove the wall, the beam would shift that way. So that tells me the force of the wall horizontally is pointing to the, to the right. All right, so those are all the forces, all the interactions. I don't have any other objects interacting or any other items interacting with that beam. And that's my object of interest. Those are my forces. All right, so we said we were going to do a torque analysis for so, first. So we'll look at all of the torques acting on the beam. Here's our free body diagram. Let's look at both the radii and the angles. Well, that requires us to pick a pivot point. Where are we going to pick that pivot point? Now remember, we might pick it in the wrong spot and then we will have to pick again. That happens. I actually do not have a key for this problem in front of me, so I'm gonna pick strategically where I think it should be, but it might be wrong and then we'll learn how to tackle through that. If I want the tension, typically I don't wanna pick where I want. If I, if I hope that this is going to give me information about the tension, I don't wanna pick my pivot point at that force. My nose is running, sorry, because it's going to have a radius of zero and there's not going to be a torque exerted by it. I also want to select, I don't necessarily want to get rid of forces that I know the value of, because if I know the value of them, I can calculate them. I know the value of the man. I know the value of the force of gravity. So I can calculate those torques, but I have no idea what the pin's doing. None at all. So I might select my pivot point at that location because I don't know it anyway. And now I've just given myself a radius of zero and therefore no, to no torque. All right. So let's look at these torques on these specific locations. We need the radii and we need the angle. 
So our first radius, we'll call the force of gravity force number one. I have my pink pen. The radius is between the pivot point and the force that's acting. And the angle, we extend our right hand again. I know you're looking at it backwards with the mirror, but this is my right hand. We extend our right hand and curl in the direction of the force. So there's my angle one. Force number two, well, that extends from the pivot point to the worker. So there's radius two, we'll call this force number two. And again, extend the radius, curl to the force. Force number three, well, that has the full radius, the full length of the beam. We're going to extend that radius, curl to the force. So there's angle three. If we consider this force four and force five, we know that radius equals zero. We don't really care about the angle at this point because we know the radius is equal to zero. So the torque will be equal to zero. All right, so let's start with torque one. Well, we know that's force one times radius one times the sine of the angle, okay? So force times radius times the sine of the angle is our torque. That's going to equal the force, mass times gravity. So the mass of the beam, 1450, times 9.8, times the radius. It acts in the geometrical center. This is six meters, that radius is three, times the sine of the angle, negative 90. It is rotating. The angle is in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so this gives me a torque of, and I'm running out of room. Usually I'd put that on the edge there, but we're going to kind of do this a little bit differently. We have 1450 times 9.8 times 3 times the sine of negative 90, which is negative 1. And we get a torque of minus 42630 newton meters. So that's the torque being exerted by the force of gravity about this pivot point. Should it be negative? Well, it's rotating in the clockwise direction. So yeah, it should be negative. All right, torque number two. <clears throat> that's the torque of our worker. Well, that's going to be force two, radius two, sine of the angle two. So our force, well, the worker is exerting his mass and his force of gravity down on the beam. So he's 80 kilograms, so his force is mg of the worker, so that's 80, times 9.8. He's acting at four meters from the pivot point that we've identified, and he's acting at an angle of negative 90. So the torque exerted by the worker is 80 times 9.8 times 4 times the sine of negative 90, which is negative 1, minus 3136 newton meters, assuming I'm plugging in these numbers right. So if you see an error in my numbers, could be because I'm plugging them in wrong. All right. Is it negative? Well, it's going to rotate that bar in the counter in the clockwise direction. That is negative. All right, torque number three. It's force three, radius three, sine of theta three. Well, my force, I don't know, it's tension T. <clears throat> my radius, that tension is acting at the full length of the beam, so that has a radius of six. Times the sine of the angle. So. We know that this angle is 30 degrees. I'm always going to use the angle that we use to extend our, our right hand rule angle. So if this is 180 degrees, this angle is 150 degrees. It should be positive. It's going in the counterclockwise direction. So 6 times the sine of 150, and you're welcome to leave this in, but we get T times 3. We don't know T. All right, torque four and five. Well, that would be force four, radius four, sine of theta four. We know that to be zero because our radius is zero. And similarly, for torque five, our radius is zero. So we have a zero torque being exerted. Now, if this object is in static equilibrium, 
that tells us that the sum of the torques are equal to zero. So if I were to add all these together, they should equal zero. Minus 4, 2, 6, 3, 0. Minus 3, 1, 3, 6. Plus t times 3 plus 0 plus 0. All of those should equal 0. So 4, 2, 6, 3, 0 plus 3, 1, 3, 6. So I have negative 4, 5, 7, 6, 6 plus t times 3. And I wanted the tension. Ooh, I could solve for the tension. Doing statics was the right choice. So I bring that to the other side and I get the tension is equal to 15 two, five, five newtons. Now we were set, told that the beam was rated to 15,000 newtons. Yikes! This worker should be worried. Assuming I did all that calculation right. All right, so how did we approach this problem? We recognized that we were in static equilibrium, okay? So no rotation and no translation. We, when we have static equilibrium, we can do a force analysis, we can do a torque analysis. We approach the torque analysis. We had to identify our object, it's the beam. So we look at all the forces acting on the beam and where they are located. We then, that's our free body diagram, we then identified the pivot point that was going to help us out and we have strategies for that. This one we chose because we wanted tension and I didn't know either of these forces. So putting a pivot point outside of either of these forces wasn't going to help me in this case. And then we identified the radii and the angles using our right hand rule to identify those angles. We just apply the net torque philosophy, so torque at each of these forces that could exert a torque, sum them up, and if I'm in equilibrium, that sum is equal to zero. All right, good job.